Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 9 for chapter 3. In this video, we'll continue our discussion with the reduction of order and in particular applying that um, to solve the case where we have repeated roots for the characteristic equation. Okay, so the characteristic equation is a um, second order polynomial and we know that it can have two roots and in certain cases the two roots might be the same. In fact, if b squared equals 4 times ac, then we'll have two roots. We call them repeated roots. Okay, And then um, we'll write r1 equal r2 equal, let's call this root r bar. In this case, it will be just negative b over 2a. Um, following the discussion we have had so far, since r bar is a root for the characteristic equation, then the function y1 equal e to the r bar t is a solution. So we have one solution. Then the important question now is that um, we need to find a second solution in order to form the general solution. And we want a second solution which is linearly independent of y1, meaning it's essentially a different function. So how can we do that? So recall that earlier we had gone through an example and we see that in the example we see that um, if you multiply the exponential function by a t, that seems to be a fun another solution. So um, based on that, we now claim that y2 equal t times e to the power rt is the second solution. Now we try to prove this claim. So the first step is um, we need to show that um, this y2 is a solution. Okay, so let's um, look at what we are facing here. We have that r bar is the double root. If it is a double root, then the characteristic equation basically is uh, r minus r bar square equals zero. And opening it up, we can write it like this, r square minus two r bar r plus r bar square equals zero. So here the r bar is, is given, is that double root. So, and once given the characteristic equation, we can go back and recover the differential equation. So r square gives y double prime, r gives y prime, and one gives y. So this will be the differential equation that will have the double roots r bar. And now let's plug in the expression of y2 to see if it is a solution. So we need to um, differentiate the y2 here to put back in the equation. Okay, so um, let's in, uh, compute y2 prime and we need to apply the um, product rule on this once. So we get um, differentiate t, you get e, and then you keep the t and differentiate the exponential function, you get an r bar in the front. Okay, and the second derivative will be um, differentiating this one more time, and uh, then we see that um, and we will um, get this by applying the product rule for this one and collect the like terms. Okay, so that's the second derivative. Now we can put all these back into the equation in this equation here. Then we see that that's y double prime minus 2 r bar, that's the y prime, plus r bar square times y. And we need to show this equals 0. And let's check. And we see that um, these are positive terms, and these terms carries the negative sign. 
and we can look at first the term with uh, e to the rt then we'll have 2r bar and then here is a negative 2r bar so they cancel and then next we look at the term t times e to the r bar t so we get an r square and then here we'll get a negative 2 r bar square and here we get a positive r bar square and then they also cancel exactly so this equals zero therefore um, y2 is a solution and the next step is that we also have to make sure that um, y1 y2 are linearly independent this can be done by computing the Brown scheme w of y1 y2 which is y1 y2 prime minus y1 prime y2 plug in the expression for y1 and y2 so we get y1 here that's y2 prime minus that's y1 prime and that's y2 and then you see that this term here will cancel this times that and you only have one term left which is uh, this that's e to the power 2 r bar t which is never zero okay so we can now conclude that this set of y1 and y2 are two linearly independent functions and we can form the general solution by a linear combination so c1 y1 plus c2 y2 okay put in the expression that's y1 that's y2 and then you can also write it um, by in a more convenient way sometimes by taking out the exponential function and then this will multiply with a, a linear function so c1 plus c2t okay so let's take an example and let's hope to make some connections um, through the example so in this example we look at the equation y double prime plus 4y prime plus 4y equals 0 so we can quickly set up the characteristic equation and then we see that we have double root so r1 equals r2 equals let's call this r which is negative 2 so we see that one solution is e to the negative 2 t so our goal is to find the second solution y2 let's go through a couple of different methods for doing this so method one um, we learned that um, before we learned this uh, reduction of order is to use the um, Wronskian and Arbo theorem Arbo theorem says that the Wronskian of these should equal to some constant times exponential um, times the integral of negative p which is here negative 4 okay and then if you work that out you get some constant times e to the negative 4t so since the constant doesn't really matter here we just set it to be 1 and then we use that as the wrong scheme and then by the definition of the wrong scheme it is um, this quantity here and then let's plug in for y1 because which we already know that's e to the 2t and uh, the y2 prime and then this is y1 prime and y2 and let's take out the exponential function and then we'll get y2 prime and uh, negative negative becomes positive so plus 2y okay so we computed the brown scheme by two different ways one is by using the Arbo theorem we get an exact expression for it and the second is uh, by putting y1 y2 with y2 unknown we get an expression that involves y2 so they must equal to each other because they are the same thing so we will basically have this equals that okay so um that's what we do here they must equal to each other therefore we have this equation and then let's um, simplify a little bit we can multiply both sides by e to the 2t to make it 1 
So we got this, and then this becomes e to the negative 2t, okay? So this is the equation. Okay, so we see again we have a first order linear equation for y2, which we know very well how to solve by the um, method of uh, um, integrating factors. So this is the integrating factor, so I'll be brief, and then you have the solution, the and mu to the negative one, integral of mu times g, which is here, and then work this out, that's just constant one, so it integrates to t plus a constant c. Okay, so, um, but then we are just finding one solutions of y2 that suits our purpose. So we can um, choose a convenient value of capital C to make this expression simple. So we see we can let C to be zero, then we get y2, that's t times e to the negative 2t, okay, which is exactly y1 times a t. Okay, therefore we can conclude this is the general solution by putting in the y1 and the y2 we have just found. Okay, and let's look at a second method. So um, we now will guess a solution of y2 of the following form. So we will keep y1 and then we multiply it by some function of t, we call it v of t. Okay, and then um, y2 basically will be v of t times e to the negative 2t. And then our goal is to find this function vt. Okay, and then we can plug this y2 back into the equation and, and set that to be zero because y2 has to be a solution. And then let's work out the derivatives first. So differentiate it once and you apply the product rule. So it's v prime times um, the e and then v times the differentiation of the exponential function. Okay, and let's take the exponential function out and then I'll get v prime minus 2v. And then I will um, need the second derivative by differentiating this one more time again by the um, the product rule. I'll skip the details and this will give me e to the negative 2t times this is v double prime minus 4v plus 4v prime plus 4v. That's the y2 double prime. And now we put them back in the equation. So I have y2 double prime plus 4 times y2 prime plus 4 times y2 equals 0. This equation must hold. So v now has a constraint. And we see that um, we can cancel out the term e to the negative 2t because it's not zero, we can drop it and we can see that there are many cancellations that's are happening. So for the v term, we have a four, we have a negative eight and we have a four and they add up to be zero. And then for the v prime term, we get negative four and positive four and they cancel. Therefore, we are left with only v double prime. So v double prime must be zero. Okay, so then we can easily um, integrate this twice to find the v and then v is some constant times c plus some other constant. So we have a candidate y2 that's v times y1 that is this v here times y1 and let's distribute the terms I will get c1 t times e to the negative 2t plus c2 e times negative 2t. So this is a solution for any choices of c1 and c2. But we are only interested in one y2 that has to be essentially different from y1 that's linearly independent and uh, possibly simple looking. So let's look at this function that we have found here. We see that we have this term, which is basically 
C2 times Y1. And this is a solution for the homogeneous equation. And that is already contained in this uh, C, some constant times Y1. So we can set C2 to be zero. And then we, are, we have one term, C1 times this one. And to make it look simple, we can choose C1 to be one. And this gives us Y2. It's only this function here. So T times E to the negative 2T. Okay, so um, we're not surprised that this method in the end gives the same general solution as the first method. Okay, so um, one observation I would make, I hope you agree with me, is that this method involves somewhat more computation than the first method. Okay, so how would does the solution look like? So let me um, give you a graph, um, a typical solution graph for this type of solution with C1, C2, and where this R here is less than zero. Okay. So in that case, a typical graph might look like this. So it will grow and then it will go down and it will go to zero. So um, this growing part would happen if um, C2 is bigger than zero. So when C2 is bigger than zero, Y will be increasing for a small amount of time. But then the exponential function takes over and then because it's this exponential decay r is less than zero that dominates and pulls the solution down okay so um, asymptotically as t goes to infinity the solution will go to zero okay so let's do a summary for the case of repeated roots so in general if one has repeated roots R1 equals R2, let's call the roots just R now. Then we have two solutions. Y1 is e to the RT, Y2 is T times e to the RT. And uh, the general solution one can quickly form and uh, also in a probably more elegant way by taking out the exponential function and collect uh, a polynomial in T here. Okay. So, okay, so now we have a solution strategy when we have repeated roots. So in the next video, we will go through more concrete examples and see more cases. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time.